if you think of like what is education, like you're basically downloading data and algorithms into your brain. And it's, it's, it's actually amazingly bad in conventional education, because like it shouldn't be like this huge chore. To have a clarity of intention about what you actually want to do and why you want to do it is the most important thing. I think the people that strive too much for the outer scorecard uh, sometimes find that it's a little hollow when they get all through. Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Living that believe in life. Out here, living that believe in life. Every day we live in that believe in life. Also like we live in that believe in life. Living life, yeah, so we're grinding it out. Every single day we be grinding it out. Also like we live in that believe in life. Oh, that believe in life. Oh. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know you're capable of more. You've got Michael Jordan level genius at something. So today let's live your best belief life and get some lessons from Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey and other billionaires. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with lesson number one. Understand the why with Elon Musk. If you think of like, what is education? Like you're basically downloading data and algorithms into your brain and it's, it's, it's actually amazingly bad in conventional education because like, it shouldn't be like this huge chore. Um, uh, so you're making it way, way better. Um, but I mean, I think, I, think, I think a lot of the things that I would say, you've probably heard a hundred times, um, and, and in fact are, if, if not doing, like the more you can gamify the, uh, the process of learning, the better. Like, I, for my kids, I do not have to encourage them to play video games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have to like pry them from their hands, yeah. like like yeah. crack. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, drop that crack needle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have that problem at your house too. Yeah, yes. Exactly. The, the crack is addictive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so so it's you know it's 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 the degree that you can make uh, somehow learning like a game, but that then yeah. it's it's better. Um, and I think unfortunately, like a lot of education is very board um, yeah. That you, you've got. Uh, you know, someone standing up there kind of lecturing at people uh, and they've done the same lecture 20 years in a row and they're not very excited about it and that lack of enthusiasm you know, is conveyed to the students that they're not very excited about it. They don't know why they're there. Yeah, like, why are we learning this stuff? We don't even yeah. know why. Um, in fact, I think a lot of things people learn are probably there's no point in, in learning them. Um, because they, they never use them in, uh, in the future. Because um, who's going to launch a rocket into space? I mean, that's just like, yeah, yeah exactly. That never happens. <laughs> yes. um, well, you have to say, like, people, I think, don't stand back and say, well, why are, are we teaching people these things? And we should tell them probably why we're teaching yeah. these things. Because a lot of kids just in, in school kind of puzzled as to why yeah. they're there. <laughs> like, yeah. you know? um, and I think if you can explain the why of things, then that makes a huge difference to people's motivation. Yeah. Then they understand, they understand purpose. Yeah. Um, so I think that's pretty important. Lesson number two, live your life with intention with Oprah Winfrey. The biggest transformation for me was living my life with intention. You know, what I know, I live by this law of, that's the third law of motion physics, what you put out is coming back. Yep. But before you even put it out, you have an intention. Mm -hmm. And so to have a clarity of intention about what you actually want to do and why you want to do it is the most important thing. And then to just set that vision and have every step you make move you in the direction of that vision. It doesn't mean that every day it's gonna happen. Some days you're off track, like I intended to work out 45 minutes, I only got in 37 this morning. Well, that's better than zero. Yeah, it's better than zero, and that's, 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 that's what I said, okay? At least you got some movement in, and I'll go back and I'll make up the other eight later. But <laughs> I but, think you just made it up. Yeah, I did. Actually, as I was walking, I think I think this is going to be eight minutes. I'm yeah. going to make it up. So uh, it's it's about it's daily renewal. It's not one big gigantic goal. It's every day coming back, giving yourself the opportunity to get it right. Because that's what every sunrise means. It's yeah. oh gosh, it's another chance to get it right. It is. Yeah. yeah. Lesson number three: Focus on your inner scorecard with Warren Buffett. I got an awful lot of good advice from my dad. And, and he, didn't, he didn't lay it on me. I mean, he just, you know, you, you, you picked it up from him, but there, there was never any of this, you know, do this, do that uh, type of thing at all. But, but I, I think he really taught me that it's more important uh, in terms of what's on your inner scorecard than your outer scorecard. I mean, some people get in a position where they... 
They're thinking all of the time of what, what the world's going to think of this or that instead of what they themselves think about it. And if, you, if, if your inner scorecard, if you're, if you're comfortable with that, uh, I think you're going to have a pretty happy life. And I think the people that strive too much for the outer scorecard uh, sometimes find that it's a little hollow when they get all through. Lesson number four, try a plant-based diet with Grant Cardone. Two weeks ago, I went, I went uh, plant only. Plant-based? Plant-based. How's that feel? I dropped the meat, dude. That's so, I want to do that. I did that for a week last week. Yeah. And I felt amazing. I had a lot of more gas just from all the uh -huh. plants, I think, mean, but uh -huh. I was cleaning it out. That's really but too I, much information uh, for me. <laughs> but I've had uh, way more energy. Yeah. But like, and like, less inflammation and less pain. And yeah, I hadn't noticed, I have a little bit of inflammation in, in, in my hands, but yeah. it, hadn't, it hadn't changed. But the plant-based thing, I watched the game, uh, the, the game, game changer. Yeah. yeah. And um, when he said, dude, you're eating the metal man. Like when I heard that, that was enough for me right you're there. Eating the middle man? You're eating the middle man. Meaning the cow, the cow eats the grass. Right, you go, eat, go right the to the source. source. The source is the grass. Yeah. And as soon as I heard that, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing eating the middleman? I ain't a middleman guy. I want to go directly to the source. Mm. Where all the energy's at. Yeah, I mean, like, like I didn't, that was the line in the show that did me. Wow. And I had been thinking about it too. I've, I've eaten meat for 60 years. Wow. I grew up on bacon, four pieces of bacon every day. So good. Uh, oh yeah, totally. <laughs> the eggs. <laughs> I, I, I have not eaten any meat in 12 days. And my energy is freaking this all day long. Oh, wow. 3.30 in the afternoon for the last 25 years, I crash at 3.30. Hard crash. I mean, like, I'll see you guys. Uh, call me <laughs> later, okay? What, what you doing at 3.30? I got a, I got a meeting. Yeah. And that. that meeting was on that nap, dude. And when I hit it, I'm talking coma. <laughs> <laughs> Deep sleep. Better than sleep at night. Sometimes it would be 30 minutes, sometimes it'd be an hour and a half. Like comatose. 12 days, I'm, I can't take a nap. I try to go take a nap, I cannot fall asleep. It's how good my energy is. Do you think you're gonna stick with this? Do you think you'll have meat sometimes? Do you think? I, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I, like, I'm not a fanatic guy, yeah, so. Yeah. so, so you might have a little meat here and there or something. I'm just gonna eat what makes me feel best. Yeah. So, I don't care if it was meat, if it was pork, if it was bacon, but right now, um, as long as I can find the greens, and I haven't, I haven't missed the meat. Wow. My digestion's better, mm. you know? My energy's <laughs> freaking great. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, man. Hey, man. Everett, how you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? You got a book coming out, don't you? Uh, you just came out. Where can people get it? Get it on uh, Amazon, easiest spot, built to serve, right there. Let's go, man. If you guys don't know Evan, follow Evan Carmichael. He's got a new book out, Build to Serve. Go grab it today at Amazon. There's a good dude right here. Lesson number five, think through with Bill Gates. I think success is always a bit dangerous. Uh, you know, and, and you can think that whatever your success was, was because you, know, you are magically uh, uh, gifted in understanding things. Whereas, of course, any success, particularly a gigantic success, is a huge number of factors, including hard work and understanding, but timing, you know, other people who came to work with you, other people who might have done the same thing who somehow messed up uh, in doing it. And so often you'll, you'll have too much confidence about what you uh, understand. Uh, you know, in science, uh, as Feynman said, the easiest person to fool is yourself. Uh, and so you have to force yourself to go through, uh, you know, again and again and think through, is this the right thing to be doing? You know, will this work? Am I doing it because it would be exciting if it succeeded? Am I really looking at these factors? In fact, in polio, several times we had to say to ourselves, was it time to give up? Uh, or really did we think there was a prospect of uh, being able to move forward? Lesson number six, solve problems with Mark Cuban. One time, you know, as you know, I went to Indiana and in Dallas in the mid nineties, you know, when, when we had a good basketball team, we'd, we literally would, when we wanted to listen to our uh, big games like Indiana, Purdue, go Hoosiers, um, we would 
call somebody in Bloomington who would put a radio next to a speakerphone and dial us and we'd sit on the other side listening over a speakerphone drinking our beer and whooping it up or doing whatever. And the internet was just starting to happen and now I'm a tech geek and I'm like into all of it. And we're like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And so one of my buddies from Indiana, Todd Wagner, was like, look, we've been thinking about this and I'm like, no, I'll figure it out. I'm a networking guy now. And so we looked for ways to um, stream Indiana basketball. We called it netcasting back then over the brand new internet. And so I went out and bought a Packard Bell 90 megahertz computer and an ISDN line and downloaded all this software. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna figure it out. And lo and behold, by, oh golly, early 1995, we had figured out a way to, um, we, would, we took these eight hour VCRs and connected it to a local radio station, record them, we'd bring them back, go through this process called encoding and put it up on this website we called AudioNet. And then I'd go to any online forum, AOL, Prodigy, CompuServe, UUNet, whatever it was, or UUNet, and I like, if you're interested in Dallas sports at all, because we hadn't gotten to Indiana yet, if you're interested in Dallas sports, go to this website, AudioNet. And back then, you had a dial-up modem, you had to download this software called TCP IP, and you had to have software from your internet provider, which meant that so few people knew how to use it, we had no idea if it would work or not. But all of a sudden, AudioNet went from 10 people a day to 100 people to 1,000 people a day. And as we added radio stations, they're getting calls from all over the world from people who are listening to their shows on demand, not even live. And then we worked with a company that put together live software, a company called Zing, and we made it live, and then everything changed. And that's really when streaming was born. And we just grew that. And then in 1998, we got into video, changed the name to broadcast.com, went public, and it was the biggest IPO in the history of the stock market at the time. Um, and then we sold it to, to Yahoo. And lesson number seven, the last one before a very special bonus clip is learn your truth with Jamie Kern Lima. Wherever you're at in life right now, at this very moment, I believe everyone has a knowing inside of them. I don't think it matters if they have a faith or no faith. I don't think about any of that. I think everyone universally has a knowing or a truth inside. Uh, and I think most people never learn how to get still and hear it. And most people, if they do get still and hear it, they're going to know right now live while they're listening to you and me, are they in the right job they're supposed to be in? Or is there, is, are, are, they, are they playing it small? <laughs> are they in the right relationship? Or are they in it and dimming their own light because of fear that maybe they'll be alone? We all have a knowing, right? And, you know, what I'll say about the idea of, of giving up, leveling up, all of that, I think it's so important that, um, you know, in that moment where I had the, and again, let me just say, there's so much I did wrong and I share all that stuff too. <laughs> but one of the things I did right was when I had this, this, gut feeling as I'm sitting there with this skin problem, this gut feeling, oh, you're supposed to figure out how to, how to create a beauty company, even though I knew nobody in the beauty industry, had no connections, had very little money because television news does not pay very well. Um, I had that knowing, right? And yet I was sitting there in my dream job. And when I look back at this journey of three years of constant rejection down to under a thousand dollars in our bank account, literally getting knocked down over and over from all of these beauty retailers that I put on a pedestal and I couldn't understand why they were telling me I wasn't the right fit for them. Every time I would check in with my gut, right? And maybe so many people out there can relate to this because you, you feel like you're doing something you're supposed to be doing. But like for me, there was no proof around me that my idea was right. There was no traction in my business. There was nobody saying, yeah, that's a great idea. Let me buy your product. And then I'm going to the beauty retailers and they didn't believe in the brand. And everything around me was saying, you're wrong. And the easiest thing in life is to confuse that with the truth. And I think the only way we know the truth in life is when we get good at getting still and hearing that inner knowing. 
Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week? When you watch a video and you get motivated, the science says you have a 35% chance of following through. That's not enough. <laughs> but when you write down what time, what place, and how you're going to actually take action on it, you jump to 91% chance of following through. And when you have public accountability and you commit to other people that you're gonna do it, it jumps to 95% that you will follow through. So I want that for you, Believe Nation. I wanna know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. Put it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. On an individual level, I think it is always, uh, it's always really good if, if there's something that you're incredibly passionate about and, um, and just sort of are fine to be intrinsically interesting and, uh, and that, that people pursue that. Um, and so the, you know, one of the, one of the, the, the resolutions I came up with um, a number of years ago was to always uh, um, value substance over status, substance over prestige. Um, and uh, you know, if, if I sort of was giving my younger self advice on what to what to do or how to how to think about um, your one's one's life, I you know I probably I, I think I you know. Um, I, I probably would still go to Stanford. Um, you know, I, I might still go to law school. Um, but I, I'd ask, I'd ask sort of, I'd ask a lot more questions why, why I was doing these things. And I think, uh, I think if I was honest about it, too much of it was driven by, um, by prestige and status, and not quite enough about um, really the substance of, uh, of trying to learn things. And you know, the, I had sort of this. I sort of just think of it as this sort of crazy rolling quarter life crisis and sort of culminated in this, uh, in this you know, big New York law firm where you know, from the outside everybody wanted to get in, from the inside everybody wanted to get out. Um, you know, um, after, I, I lasted seven months and three days and after, uh, um, and uh, when, I, when, I, when I left, one of the people down the hall said, you know, it's so reassuring to see you leave, Peter. I had no idea it was possible to escape from Alcatraz, <laughs> which, which again, uh, and you know, and again, I. And all you had to do was go through the front door. But our identity, um, people's identities get so wrapped up in um, the things they compete for that it was inconceivable for people to actually do that. And, and then the question was, you know, well, how had I ended up there? Why, why had I not thought about that more? And, uh, and I think it was um, that I had taken too many of these shortcuts of valuing sort of what was prestigious, what was conventional over what I, uh, what I really wanted to do. So I think, I think always, substance over status. If you want even more insights into how billionaires think, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. You should just be yourself, right? I mean, I, I take pride in the fact that I didn't give a shit what anybody thought or said. I was just gonna be myself. I find if I don't get enough sleep, then I'm, I'm quite grumpy. Um, 